no nation which expects to be the leader of other nations can expect to stay behind in this race for space. Hello and welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help prepare you for a bright future in the space industry. Many of our viewers were upset by last week's lesson, because we seem to be overly critical of SpaceX and Elon Musk in their eyes, and perhaps we were. But there is a reason I spoke out. Let me lay it all on the table. Genius is a tricky thing. Those who see what everyone else cannot are often hallucinating, but sometimes they are just blessed with a mind that is working on a level most cannot imagine. These people often have gifts that set them apart from the rest of humanity. And seeing things differently from everyone else can make it very hard to relate to other people. Being brilliant by no means makes you always right or even safe. Throughout history, those few burdened by almost superhuman intellect do not have an easy life. We are all familiar with the artistic tragedies of Van Gogh and Beethoven, but I'm talking about those who truly changed the world, and would have done even more had they been appreciated. We don't know exactly when Archimedes was born, but we are certain that it was in Syracuse, Sicily, which is now Italy. But at that time, around 287 BC, Syracuse was a self-governing colony of ancient Greece. Archimedes may have been educated at the fabled Library of Alexandria, this great repository of knowledge had been founded about a decade earlier. Archimedes spent his life dedicated to mathematics and engineering. He derived a method of calculating the area under a curve and created an early form of integration, which means that he, and not Newton or Leibniz, invented calculus. He found a method of approximating the value of pi using polygons and famously discovered the laws governing buoyancy. He developed great feats of engineering, and the Archimedes screw is still used today to move fluids. But the two most famous inventions of his were the Claw of Archimedes and the world's first death ray. These were built to help defend his city against attack. The Claw was a mechanical arm with gears and pulleys, capable of reaching into the harbor and crushing a ship. The death ray was a large set of mirrors designed to focus the sun's heat onto enemy sails, setting them ablaze. His genius became so well known that the enemies of Syracuse attacked to steal him away. This resulted in a full-scale assault on Syracuse, and Archimedes seems to have suffered the social blindness of most geniuses. When a soldier came charging into his home, Archimedes ordered the soldier to get off the sand that he was using as a chalkboard. The soldier ran him through with a spear, unknowingly ending the life of the man the entire attack was sent to retrieve. While the soldier was executed for his mistake, we must ask why a man so brilliant was stupid enough to speak disrespectfully to a man holding a spear. But there are many other parallels throughout history, of geniuses understanding the natural world intuitively, while not understanding people at all. This is not surprising, as the universe operates under predictable laws. Even the strangeness of quantum mechanics can be calculated with incredible accuracy. And the predictions of that seemingly chaotic theory have given us our world as we know it today. But understanding the workings of the human brain and the symphony of the mind that is played upon it, while occupying decades of my own life, still eludes all of us. One of those unhappy geniuses was Nikola Tesla. Tesla did not have an easy childhood. He was born a part of the Austrian Empire that is now part of Croatia. He credited his memory and creativity to his mother, as she seemed to be a person of exceptional intelligence. Tesla, when he was just five, lost his favorite older brother to a writing accident. This death affected him profoundly, and he was prone to melancholy forever after. As a teenager, Tesla contracted cholera himself, and was bedridden for nine months, coming very close to death many times. It was during this time that he decided to be an electrical engineer. Tesla loved the seeming magic of magnetism and electricity. Now we've talked about the right half of the brain, non-dominant in most people, and how it is often the generator of creative ideas. The big picture analyzer, if you will. The non-dominant hemisphere is non-verbal and often speaks to the verbal half of the brain through imagery, intuition, and dreams 
through these connections between the two hemispheres. Tesla had vivid dreams and daydreams, almost visions, that would often come in flashes of light. These would often inspire his inventions later in life. When he recovered, he went to university in Prague. While he was there studying electromagnetism, he had a clear vision of a constantly shifting and rotating magnetic field that could power a new type of motor. He later turned this vision into a working engine, the very AC induction motors that are still used around the world today. Tesla also went on to develop the alternating current that powers all of our homes, the fluorescent lights that for almost a century were the most efficient we had. And it was Tesla, not Marconi, who invented the radio, as the U.S. Supreme Court confirmed just after his death too late to save him from the penniless depths into which he had fallen. Many people see parallels between Tesla and Elon Musk, but their greatest difference is the most important. Geniuses often misvalue wealth and power, despising those who pursue it. But if there is one thing that led Tesla to a lonely death, starving in a hotel room paid for by charity, it was financial mismanagement. Tesla was unconcerned with the commercial potential of his inventions often giving away groundbreaking devices for a relative pittance, instead of licensing the technology, which could have ensured him a lasting income. He lost control of the AC motor and was cheated out of his patent on the radio, and countless other inventions. When he did get paid for something, Tesla would reinvest everything he made back into his experiments, failing to realize that maintaining financial security is critical to the success of any large project. He had borrowed money to build the Wardenclyffe Wireless Power Broadcasting Tower in Long Island, then told the investors that he wanted to give the technology away for free. The investors, of course, pulled out, and despite the potential of wireless power and communication, Tesla was never able to complete his great dream. In this regard, Elon Musk is the opposite of Nikola Tesla, as he clearly values wealth and power, at least for what they can do. He seems to be a genius, mostly at marketing and systems design, in fact. While Tesla understood nature at a fundamental level, recognizing the potential of using these forces to create, Elon Musk sees the untapped potential in the inventions of others, and uses his algorithmic skills to refine the company's processes, down to the essence of efficiency and productivity. Musk is also creative in his own right. When it comes to computer coding, the first thing he ever sold was a video game he wrote as a child and he later coded a business location system, a sort of digital yellow pages. But all these successes were built on existing foundations. Elon has in fact never personally invented a totally new concept. Instead, he takes an unrealized idea with potential and makes it not just real, but better than any of us thought it could be. Musk did not create PayPal. He just saw the potential of safe internet transactions and made it real. He did not start Tesla Motors. He bought a small niche company that was already making cars and designed the systems and procedures that changed the automotive industry forever. With his company being the first to dramatically improve Nikola Tesla's own original engine design. There is not a single piece of Starship that is an original invention of Elon Musk. Everything that makes this amazing ship work is a result of engineers long forgotten or dead. What he has done is take the work of those people bring it together with a team of brilliant talent, and give them the resources to build something better than anything the world has ever seen. And if all goes well, we will watch this launch in the next few days or weeks. And that is what makes Musk so different from Tesla. Elon Musk recognized early on that the financial mistakes of Nikola Tesla kept him from reaching his goals, and Musk has dedicated much of his considerable intellect to understanding and leveraging finances. This allows him to find commercial applications for his engineering marvels. Electric cars are now not just a reality, but a coveted commodity. He put engineering teams together to improve batteries for his cars and immediately saw the potential for these to partner with energy systems, including solar and wind, making homes and entire power grids self-sufficient, resilient, and carbon neutral. The commonality of all these systems is that they continuously bring income under Musk's control. This gives him the continuous financial stream to chart his own course. And that brings us back to Starship, which will make world-changing innovations like Starlink commonplace.
I was critical of the first Starship Integrated Test, not because I think I know more than the engineers at SpaceX. As many of you pointed out, I do not. While I commanded rockets in the military, learning how they were designed came later. And while I do have a degree in space science, my hands-on engineering experience is still too limited for me to criticize the engineering skills of the men and women who built this. To do so would be an act of extreme hubris. These lessons are to help us understand what they and others have done and why, not to teach the experts on how to do things better. Instead, I have spent most of my life studying biomedical science, helping to develop procedures and devices to try to save the lives of trauma victims. And I may have more parallels with Nikola's flaws than Elon does, often not seeing the dangers of trying to work for the greater good. I invented an emergency cardiac device once, but lacked the marketing skills to profit from it. And I've also spent a vast amount of my time on this planet so far, trying to understand the workings of the human brain. I've spent decades studying the oddities of human behavior, the extreme and strange decisions that often intelligent people sometimes make, and I see parallels in behavior that concern me. Elon Musk is the richest man on Earth, and so was Howard Hughes at one time. He was also a genius, and helped create many of the aircraft that defended America during World War II. He went on to build a massive empire, forging the first efficient international airline. But once his wealth isolated him from the insights of others, and he bought into his own legend, he became a paranoid recluse, dying alone and almost starved. When you watch one of the greatest science fiction movies of all time, 2001 A Space Odyssey, you will see this beautiful space plane. This is the Orion 3, flying Dr. Haywood Floyd to the moon, so he can take a look at that scary obelisk. This space plane is being operated by the Pan American World Airways, often abbreviated Pan Am. Pan Am was, when the movie was released in 1968, the principal international airline of the United States and one of the world's largest and most iconic. Pan Am had been founded by a man named Juan Tripp in 1927 and had started as mainly a Caribbean airline, flying between Key West, Florida, and Havana, Cuba. By the 1930s, it had expanded to South America, and then it added transatlantic and transpacific flights. Pan Am then expanded into jets and became synonymous with luxury travel. At about the same time, this man named Howard Hughes was developing his own airline. He had bought a controlling interest in Transworld Airways in 1939 and grew it into a direct competitor of Pan Am. He tried to modernize his fleet to compete. The two companies competed in almost everything, and Howard Hughes thought that he should be able to easily outperform Pan Am. Hughes had been a genius in aviation and filmmaking and had become the richest man in the world. Juan Tripp was not nearly so well known, just a quiet business executive, building a quality airline. Pan Am began to outperform Hughes Aircraft, and Howard Hughes did not take it well. His genius became plagued by erratic thoughts, and Howard Hughes was removed from the leadership of the aircraft company that bore his name. He spent his final years never leaving the top floor of a towering building he owned, with extremely loyal guards on the bottom floors that would not let even law enforcement or process servers approach him, while everything he built slipped from his hands. One trip retired fully from Pan Am in 1970. He had married in 1928 and was still married to the same woman when he died with four successful children and lots of grandchildren, while Howard Hughes had married and divorced twice with no children, and then died alone in 1976. Everyone knows the name of Howard Hughes, but few know that of Juan Tripp. But I ask you to ponder who truly had the greatest wealth and what matters most. Genius can often lead to madness, and I worry about Musk being in an echo chamber that does not keep him grounded. Now, there is no doubt that Elon is an inspiring leader, and he deserves credit for being the Edison of our time. But the loss of a charismatic leader central to a company's identity can leave a company adrift. SpaceX is a success because of the brilliant and dedicated work of thousands of people and the management of Gwen Shotwell. American astronauts are flying back and forth from the ISS on SpaceX rockets today because of those people, not anyone alone. But SpaceX itself exists, 
only because of the charismatic talents of one man. This man. Whatever his flaws, he is humanity's best hope to start colonizing space in our lifetime. And he has made enemies. Some through no fault of his own, but others because he doesn't seem to understand common civility. And these enemies are waiting and hoping for an error large enough to shut him down. A catastrophic launch failure at Starbase will not be forgiven as easily for SpaceX as it would be for those more talented at toadying up to power. Until you get a rocket to orbit, we are always looking at you, Jeff. I criticized some of Elon's decisions in our last lesson, because I'm scared. I'm afraid that before SpaceX can become a self-sustaining deep space economic entity, something will happen to stop everything they are striving to accomplish. The easiest way to do this is to use federal law as a weapon against him. I'm very surprised, in fact, that no criminal charges have been brought against him so far. Federal laws on securities, fraud, conspiracy, and many other areas are so broad and vague that there is not a single American adult that could not be indicted and convicted today. We are all free, at the pleasure of any federal agent or attorney that chooses to target us. Criminal prosecution is how our government has become able to try and dictate and control the behavior of its citizens today. If they don't like the decisions you make, even lawful ones, they will find an excuse to put you away, thereby controlling the actions of others through fear. America is supposed to be a true democracy, where the people's rights are absolute, and the government works for the people, but those days seem long gone. And don't think that Elon's wealth will protect him. There is no human being on this planet with the resources to compete with the federal authorities. Just look at what happened to Senator Ted Stevens. And there is also no law that the federal government must follow when it targets what it perceives to be an enemy. Who is going to make them? The judicial system in America, once a source of checks and balances, has been weakened to the point that, while they have power over the liberty of citizens, they are almost powerless to police the actions of federal law enforcement. Indeed, plans were being made by the American government to murder a journalist, Julian Assange, because they didn't like the truths he disclosed. A clear violation of international and American law. Is this not a criminal conspiracy? It turns out that it is now only a punishable crime to lie or murder if the American government doesn't benefit from those actions. The U.S. government exists today only to serve itself and to expand its power. This can be seen in two Supreme Court decisions. One determined that it is perfectly fine to execute an innocent person as long as his trial was technically correct. The other more recently found that if anyone had filed a habeas corpus petition in the past, they could not file another one if the law or its interpretation changes, even if the change proves their absolute innocence of any crime. The wheels of federal injustice now move in one direction only. And escaping it once targeted is like winning the lottery. Nice when it happens, but don't count on it. Elon exists today at the mercy of the unrestrained power and resources of any federal prosecutor that chooses to go after him. As long as Elon is useful to the government, they will probably let him be. But the minute they no longer need him, he and everything he built can cease to exist. What I fear the most is that either his success or his mouth has angered the wrong person, someone with absolute immunity from our laws, and that person will find an excuse to take Elon's liberty or his company. If SpaceX loses its charismatic leader too soon, before Starship has helped establish permanent settlements in space, it may be centuries before another like him comes again. Something to think about. Thanks for listening, and stay safe at Astro Proterra.